Well, I think we'll get started. This will be the uh, last session of the day, and this is another fur irrigation talk. And if you're here for fur irrigation, I'm going to get another talk. I didn't realize that there's going to be this much interest in fur irrigation when I started this two years ago doing some work with fur irrigation. So I'm here with Brent Beckwith, the East Coast. County Asian in Arkansas staff chair in Arkansas County, Arkansas, and Rice Research and Extension Center where I'm based is we're in the same building. So Grant and I do a lot of work together, and this year we spent a lot of time working with rice farmers on irrigated rice and multiple inland rice irrigation. So we're going to share with you today what we what we have learned this last year working with farmers uh, with these two systems and kind of the angles that we took. And you'll probably hear some of the same things, which I've heard earlier today in the other row rice talks. But my goal with row rice was to really focus in on the how do we irrigate for irrigated rice. You know, what are the shortcomings and how do we improve that? Because I feel like the yield gap that's perceived out there may have something to do with, with how we irrigate row rice. So I'll show you some of that data and why I think that. Uh, uh, Jason Kruitz and uh, my colleagues in the region, we just finished a, an irrigation uh, survey, and this is from 2015. We sampled uh, about one, one million of the 13 million acres in the region, and we asked them what, what, you know, what their production system for rice were, and uh, about 10% of our rice was reported as being fertigated rice, and that is more than zero grade which I find really interesting because we've been building zero grade systems for 30 years. And uh, all of a sudden, we've got more fur irrigation than we do zero grade. You know, that, a few years ago, or when I came five years ago to Arkansas, that was definitely not the case. So there's been a lot of interest in fur-gated rice. I think this workshop or this conference this week shows a lot of talks on fur rice. How do we do it? Unfortunately, we don't have all the answers. We don't have a formal extension publication on irrigated rice in Arkansas. We are working on it, and it should be out this winter. But well, we don't have good recommendations for fur rice, which is why you know I initiated this study, the work that I did with others. So uh, the angle we took, we do a lot of work with farmers, uh, comparing uh, what they're doing with uh, irrigation water management practices. So we rolled this project into that effort, and with that we put. Computerized pulse flexion out, surge irrigation, soil moisture sensors, we put a flow meter out so much water we're using. We recommend end blocking, especially on rice, but all the other crops as well. End blocking is where you block the end of the furrow so the water backs up the furrow, and it is a well known concept of uh, irrigation efficiency practice to do this. In fact, I have farmers in our end. Uh, I have farmers that do it, they'll put tarps over the end, the end of the drains or block the end of the field up and then let it go when they're done. It's very efficient uh, practice. Tailwater recovery. Uh, one thing I'll tell you about any time you do any of this work and start using these practices, you've got to do everything around the pump. So if you've got a pump that serves more than one field, you've got to, you've got to implement all the irrigation water management practices on that, on that system because you can't put a study out and not be able to manage the water we need to put to that field. And the case in point is uh, if you put a fertigated field out and then you've got a, a cascade field that's serviced by that same pump and you're waiting for water to go through those cascades, you need to be able to come back on this irrigation water management field when you need to do it. And so you've got to have multiple inlet on that field also. So you've got control of your water, not the water has control of you. So anytime you do start uh, using these practices, you need to think about that. Again, you know, I want to have control of my water, and I want to have control of me. So every time we approach an irrigation system or project, this is what we, how we look at it. It's a pyramid process. I put this in every presentation I do. We start out with a, a good base, good foundation. We have an efficient pump with enough capacity. Uh, we have a flow meter on it and how much water we're using, how much water we have. We've got to have good irrigation efficiency so we get that water across the field uniformly. That's with computerized hole selection, surge irrigation, um, multiple inland come into play, and then scheduling on time is the very top of the pyramid. And it's often easy to grab the top of the pyramid if the sensor's out, but if you're not doing these other things, it's going to work against you. All right. Work with farmers. We set up a control field and an irrigation water management field. We put all the practices on our, our field and then meters on both and then we compare. 
and we've done this in soybeans and, and other crops, and we've seen in, in, in Arkansas, we use about 27% less water. Um, soybeans equates to about two, two and a half acre inches. So let's try this on row rice, and that's what we did this last year. Um, my colleagues tell me there's a 50% yield penalty for fertigated rice, but a lot of farmers really want to want to see uh, it's evaluated because there's a lot of less there's less labor on trips across the field we start doing no-till and cover crops uh, and the, one of the big questions that we have is we don't really know how much water people are using in fertigated rocks and how much should you use that's a real question and so this was my first take at trying to get some hand, my hands around it or our hands around it and then you know these other practices that we're using other crops uh, going to be able to have some of the same water savings. Um, so unfortunately for, for rural rice there's still lots of questions about herbicide programs, about the fertilizer program, um, how to manage for rice. So uh, lots of questions, not as many answers as we would like. So this is our data from all the cooperators we worked with uh, this summer and they're spread out across the entire state of Arkansas from Pine Bluff, which is about as far south, as we went clear up to a few miles from Missouri. So I've got people spread out all in through there. Um, we had a, a comparison field a control and, and, and then the fluorigated rice was, was the IWM field. Uh, most of them had, a few of them had surge irrigation, most of them were clay soil. Um, if there was a sensor, uh, it, it was a new farmer, someone who had never tried fluorigated rice before. If they didn't, they were, they were already doing it. And so what we did with them is we just monitored what they did and, and followed, followed them. Uh, you can see there's a wide range of uh, results. Um, for Arkansas, I'm just going to go through them individually. Arkansas 1, uh, we used 63 acre inches. We had 159 bushels. Uh, we did have a control field, but he had good yield data historically on this field. To so long, he'd never grown raw rice. Uh, and I actually went and planted it for him. He pulled the beds way too high in the silt loam soil. Okay, and I think we didn't talk about how to pull the beds. He wanted to we just pulled them. We showed up and we're like, a little too tall. It, we, we fought him. We fought it all year. That's one of the big mistakes you can make with raw rice. Uh, but still, that's not a bad deal. It's planted in mid, late May, and he was, he was happy. He was happy with it. Everybody liked that 200 bushel rice in Arkansas this year. A few people got it. Um, what variety were you playing? Uh, this is 745. Uh, 63 acre inches is tailwater recovery system, and the reason we use 63 is because uh, for several events, we put 10 acre inches on. 10 acre inches on one event, trying to get herbicide and fertilizer activated. Okay. So we ran literally for four days pumping water on this field. So, and that's because we pulled the beds too hot. So kind of throw that one out, but it's still not a bad yield. It's a corn field. And he was happy with it. Arkansas 2, uh, this was one of those, uh, let's, I don't like to do uh, levees. So we do row rise because the levees are 10 feet apart. So uh, 29 uh, acre inches and the control field was similar. The control field had 52 acre inches on it. We had a little better yield, 179. Of course, this is a problem field. Uh, we had a hard time getting the top end of the field irrigated. We had herbicide issues, we had weed pressure issues, we couldn't get it sprayed. Uh, the airplane had more next to it, we couldn't get the whole field sprayed, so we had some issues. But when we cut it, the bottom of the field was pretty was a little over 200 bushels. It was right there with the control field. So if we could, uh, we could have gotten rid of the weeds and done a better job at the top end, we could have brought that up. What I would tell you, what I learned from it, what we both learned about it was, you know, we don't want to put real rice on steep fields. Let's put it on the flat fields. And I've heard that again today as well. Green County, uh, this guy gave me several fields to work with. Um, we put the most on uh, the row rice field that it cut the most. He cut 209 bushels. The control field was only 155. We had one with a surge valve. Uh, he cut about what the control field cut. So he was happy with the results from that. Uh, Clay County had several row rice fields. One of them was an express. So, you know, take that for what it's worth. Uh, <laughs> 
172, 167 on the row rise fields using between 11 and 15 acre inches. The control field used more and got 156. Uh, had another another field up in that area. Uh, control cut 202, used 20 acre inches, used a little less on the row rise field and cut a little less on that. And that was a very big field. Uh, we probably should have managed it a little differently because it took a long time to irrigate. Jefferson County. These are all hybrids up until this one. This one is a CL111 or CL161. Um, I think it was split or some of both in that. Uh, you know, that's pretty close. Uh, 164 on the row rise, 176 on the control. We used uh, several inches less water, very shallow beds. This guy who's had a lot of experience doing row rise. So on average, if you throw it all together, there's only a couple bushel difference. You, know, you take that uh, statistically. I've uh, got the, the stats there. Um, yields are not significantly different, but there's a lot wide range and probably management compatibility uh, of the growers. So that's the data. Anyway, so I'm going to go through those fields. This is uh, one of the Green County ones. So this we had a whole selection field and I had one with a surge valve and a clay soil. It didn't cut as good, uh, but the more water we used, the more rice, the more rice we got. And this was a 45-34 rice tag. Uh, we used soil moisture monitors a lot, and in, in every field had one. Uh, we tried to keep it between uh, saturation and field capacity. Um, a lot of times, uh, most farmers irrigated before we would have told them to, which is which is fine. We took soil samples, and so we knew where the, where, where the uh, <coughs> exactly saturation and field capacity were. We put the we used watermark sensors. We put them at four, six, twelve, and eighteen, and these are this is shallower than we would in our other row crops. So, uh, how far so down the slope did you put those? Uh, two thirds or three fourths down the slope. <coughs> uh, yeah, so at the back end of the field. In general, what we did is some of these backed up quite a ways. We unlocked almost everybody unlocked. And so we go up before the end blocking somewhere, you know, so we know wherever they irrigate, we're not going to be in standing water. So in some of the fields, we're ending up being about halfway down the furrow because they backed up so far. So we try to find a location of the field that's going to be most limiting. I guess you could argue maybe we need to put them at the very top, but this is where we chose to put them. And What's most of your slope? What are the slopes? You know, most of these are pretty flat. I mean, two, two tents. Except the one in the, the one in uh, <laughs> the one in uh, you say two Arkansas, tents? Arkansas with the, the ones in Arkansas would be steeper. You say two tents? Two tents per hundred. Yeah. Oh, that's not very it's flat. <laughs> I mean, it's very common. I mean, all right, well, common depends on Arkansas. where you are. You know, <laughs> right. everything's relative. Yeah. yeah. All right. So this is what some of the sensor data looks like. This is the one with the really tall beds and so long. And we gave them uh, 40 centibars. We said, I don't want the top two sensors going over 40 centibars, or we're going to be calling him. And so you can see, we we, we were calling him a lot. Um, and uh, he was irrigating a lot. Uh, and then a, lot, a lot of that's because we couldn't get the water to the plants. We had a surge valve, and we made several adjustments to the valve and, and tried to help that out. This is a clay soil. This is the last guy who had a had at conventionals, and he kept that thing flat pretty much all year except around the two time periods there where it got a little high. The 4th of July I called him and, and he said, yeah, Dr. Cameron, I know I need to get over there. I just, I got busy with the other things. I know I'm probably here getting that rice. <coughs> and uh, so what I think happened was brugated rice. And if you think about the flood, you know, rice uses water differently. And especially during boot, between green ring and boot, there's time periods there. It seems like there's weeks you watch these sensors, and all of a sudden they would just really move on you. And what's happening is that rice is really using water. And if we're on a three-day schedule, which a lot of guys are, some of these guys are on a two-day schedule. Uh, man, two three days is not enough. You may need to be irrigating for a short periods of time, almost every day, because it's really using water. And I think that may be one of the reasons. Uh, that we have this deal dragged with row rice and there's these short periods of time where the plants are really using water and, uh, and, uh, and, we're, not, and we're not providing. We were watching the centers and I was at a conference and the field that we're managing on the station 
and I'm looking at my phone, and we need to get water for this. So, so what is this chart showing? Uh, so this is a uh, this is soil soil tension. Um, so zero zero is wet and sixty is dry. Okay, and we say don't go over forty. If you can argue where that number is, just where I picked it. But with this criteria, we use steel capacity is going to be right about here. So anything above there is probably going to be saturated. So we try to keep it in the saturated zone, uh, the soil saturated. Okay. So it went below that mark. You need to use calling to irrigate. Right. So what we would do is we would, Graham or myself, we're looking at these two lines, and we say we don't want both of these to go over four. One may be okay, but definitely not both of them. And, we want to try to keep the soil. So as you're irrigating, you know, if you need to increase your frequency, depending on how the sensors reacted. So you had some guys that didn't have the sensors. They were just doing it by experience. No, no. The, the, uh, this guy, this guy has a sensor. Hard to ever look at. Oh, okay. And I'm watching. Him. Okay. And he's not. Because he's doing it normally, and that's why I called him on the Fourth of July because I said, hey, you know, what's going on? We need to, we need to irrigate this field. This, uh, I know it's a conventional variety, right? So, Chris, they got not determined like the growth stage of the rice, like you have with the corn and beans, when, when it's needing it. We haven't, we haven't done that yet. Okay. That, that's work that needs to be done. Isn't that awful fast for it to drop within a couple of days from saturating now, to? Remember, the, this is these are these sensors are really shallow. They're four and six inches. So yeah, it is, and the scale may be a little misleading. You know, that's probably a couple of days in there. And they're probably irrigating every three to four days, three to five days, I'd say most guys. We were also really hot and dry. Yeah, it moves fast. Well, it can move fast on it. So as a rule, did, you're probably going to say this when you get down to all the fields, but as a rule, they irrigate every how many days? Two to three days. Yep. You know, and most of the guys, we didn't tell them what to do. The ones we were helping with, they were, some of them were watching the sensor, and when the sensor started to move, they, you know, would fire the pump up. Some of these guys never looked at the sensor data. We just watched what they did. This is one we just watched what he did. That's what I'm saying is this can sneak up on you. I think that's maybe one of the reasons. So my suggestion to anybody who's trying to arise, the sensor's a really nice tool. It's going to tell you what you're doing. If you're, if you're doing, if you're getting it up, and what you're doing, if it's effective. Was that a clay soil? It doesn't clay soil. <laughs> really shallow beds. I think he just made beds with field cold sand. I mean, they're like an inch or two tall. They're really shallow. Surge valves, I'd say on a clay soil or we end block a lot, probably don't need them, but they were an incredibly valuable tool on the silt model because we could go in there and change our program and try to get a, do a better job of getting water across the beds. So if you're going to grow um, in a silt loam, most of them are 30 inch beds and silt loams. In the clay soils, they were probably 38 or 40 so very but uh, I'm not sure I'd use it. Since we're irrigating so often, probably not necessary to play, but still not that clay soil. This is that big field in that clay soil in, uh, in Clay County. Uh, really big field, uh, but had real good roots. And this is 745. Uh, this is uh, Arkansas County. You see the, the ceiling and having a hard time getting water across the beds. Um, that's why we use so much water, so it can really, it can really punish you if you don't, if you don't set your beds up right. And that's what it looks like, and it drives you crazy trying to get water to those plants. Picture for that. This is how we planted it. Uh, we, we adjusted drill pressure on every row um, so that we try to fit the beds. And that's kind of what it looks like. This is a, a silt mile in Arkansas. <coughs> This was a steep one. You actually see some of the, the top of the field steeper, and it fell off about seven feet to the end of the poly pipe, and so we had a heck of a time trying to get water, even with a pipe planter, to get the, get the pipe plan to work properly. We designed it, and I didn't get a solution, so I had to design it flat, and then I had to go and choke it, and then I get there, and it tells me, we've got to dump water over the edge to this other. And then you just... Well, what does that mean? I'm going to stuff down. So. <laughs> the pipe, not the farmer, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, but, yeah, you know, use a lot less water. And the two fields are pretty comparable. I mean, they're right next to each other. I'd say they're very similar, and they're both steep. That's why I wanted to try it on this. So, so. <laughs> but. So you've got to have real shallow beds where it's real to run the drill. Yeah, you want basically just enough beds that won't cross the bed. Yeah. 
have your own soil and you have your own soil. And they're calling them the whole water. Just so one. So we have 40 acres of row rice on the station that I have in an irrigation study. We're looking at irrigation efficiency and we, and we like using rice because we need to irrigate a lot. And so I plant all different varieties in that and, and these are the results from the varieties. And uh, no difference between any of the hybrids, and that probably lines up with what you'd find in the field, or, you know, a plot study or a, another variety study. Um, and uh, I'll not belabor that, but that's uh, the other thing to keep in mind with these yields. I know they're a little low, but this is continuous rice, and this is the last field in Arkansas County that was probably planted. I wait till the very last day to plant because I'm I'm on irrigate. I want to irrigate my studies. I'm an irrigation engineer, so I wait. So we have all the rain I can before I plant, so my yield joys can be depressed from, from uh, say, my colleagues who already planted the rice a month before I get, I get to it. So keep that in mind. Interesting thing about this slide I want, I want to talk about is on this, this field, I'm not using any more than uh, zero grade. Zero grade is 19 to 20 acre inches. And for the last two years, we haven't used more than that on this field. Uh, we've done some end blocking. I don't think it affects our efficiency quite as much as, as we think helps but what is interesting is that is a chart on the right hand bottom right hand corner I look at irrigation efficiency during the season and I start out really good I come out with really good irrigation efficiency and then as we go along what happens is our irrigation efficiency goes down because the soil seal so at the beginning of the year if I'm putting on an inch I'm getting 0.8 of an inch into the profile by the end of, by the middle of the season when the plants need the most water I'm getting less than a half an acre inch in that's what 47% means. And when do I need the most water to those plants? Right then, when I'm getting the least into the soil. So that's what I'm saying about we may have to really change how we think about how often we irrigate if we're sealing up. We're not getting the water to the plants, and that's why the sensors, I think, can really help. That. Is that a still long? Still long. A prairie soil, we call it prairie soil. You know, prairie how much are the sensors you're using? How much, what? How much are all the sensors you need? The Aquatracks cost about a little over $1,000, and the sensors, we use four of them, they're about $35 a piece, so you end up with between $1,200 and $400 for telemetry unit, probably around $100 a year. The somewhere around there. When you, each field, you put multiple sensors in it, though, right? Yeah, we put four sensors at different depths, and you could probably get rid of the bottom two because they're pretty much memory. but they're all in the same row they're not stretched across yeah, the field. You, could, you could put them in different rows if you want mm -hmm. this is my first this are this is really my first time to try and see what we could do with this. The bottom two you really using the brain. yeah i get saturated down there it gets so wet you irrigate so much that yeah. those bottom two are on the move so it depends on your soil i mean i would start out with them and, and and some experience and then if they're not moving you're not getting any value out of them then use them you know either shallow them up is, is, any this ground, is any of this ground subsoil? Uh, let's see, I think that's my next slide. So the first year I did this, we had land leveled it, and uh, it was compacted, and you really notice the compaction. It didn't affect the efficiency quite as much as I thought, but this year we subsoiled 12 inches, I read the detail that 12 inches, that helped a lot. I think it helped a lot. The rice looked better, I didn't have the, the, the streaking. Uh, you can see the furrows and the, and the beds quite as much, and so I, I strongly suggest some deep tillage at least to get you started, especially if you've got any kind of compaction uh, that you need some soil to work with. The first year I did this, we were, we were dragging the field cultivators through the field and, and we couldn't get it to go in the ground. All right, there's, there's that we're grinding on the surface, the shovels work, so. So here's my take home message on furrow rice. Uh, probably the beds or the are really key. And what I said in my uh, two by four under the tires with a better roller, and that's how I said the better, and that seems to work pretty good for our soils. You've got to figure out what works for, for your situation. But some of these guys, I mean, there's hardly a bed at all, and it works great for them. So you got to figure out what works. Uh, in block, and uh, some guys would plug the drain, some guys would pull a, a, a levee at the end and put a gate or two in. Um, this is, seems to me a lot easier to implement in clay soils from the farmers we work with. And almost every time uh, through the season, there was at least one period on every field that we saw the sensors really really come up a lot. And, and it's because we weren't irrigating enough. And that was the trend we saw almost on every field. 
Uh, most of these guys are putting on less than around half, of the, a half an acre inch to an acre an inch. I had some of them put on more, and that looks better if you can get it in there. So, But I think short, uh, short applications are fine. Um, because we irrigate so many times. Uh, nitrogen management, everybody's nitrogen uh, program was different. Most of them use some kind of ammonium uh, sulfate in that first shot. Uh, some guys just did two. Two was real common split. Some guys did three and four. So we don't have good answers for that. The herbicide programs, I would tell you, most everybody used. Uh, there's a lot of command and, and facet, some sharpen, especially at more so they have pig weeds. On my field, it was uh, command and fa uh, facet. Uh, some propanil the first year, we always put permit, or permit plus in because we have nut grass. And then this last year, we should have used uh, clencher for some grass. With some grass coming up, we should have uh, we should have hit. But I don't think that's really all that different from uh, oh, prow. I used prow this year, I didn't use it the year before. So, I don't know that's all different than, than what we use on the station for our other rice. So. Surge irrigation on till bombs, and, uh, and we're going to continue to work with farmers. I'm, I'm, I've lost some of my some of the guys because the fields we're using, they need to rotate. And so if there are people interested in working with us on this, uh, we're happy to help and provide meters and sensors and uh, tell you what we know. So I'm always looking for good cooperators in Arkansas. So. So, all this has been funded by the rice board, and what we're going to do next is talk about multiple inlet rice irrigation. I'm going to have Grant talk about that because it's kind of a tag team effort. So. Uh, I'm, I'm the interim staff chair in Arkansas County. I've been there about 10 years. This past year, I had an opportunity to work with um, several guys who did multiple inlet. Uh, first off, this is not a new idea. Uh, that's Phil Tucker. Up there on the top left, talking back in the early 90s near Stuttgart, on implement this. Till lately, though, with technology, you still had to somewhat guess or sit down and do a lot of figuring and um, calculations to figure out the um, holes, what you need to punch to match your flow and everything to make it um, as efficient as possible. Uh, on the right, you can see <coughs> this current Joe, current of Joe Massey, Holly. The poly pipe going to the top of the field, putting equal amount of water, proportion of the water in on the multiple inlets, and how it's on um, a flood spin and shade versus on the left just sending a cascade of water down the field. You know, this has many benefits. It helps on reduce cold water effects. Uh, we can, it um, helps us save rainfall. We tell farmers treat each um, paddy as its own separate field. And then, um, we achieve a flood faster. Now it might not, it's not gonna be a deep flood, but if we get that skim of water across that field, it cuts down on loss of nitrogen, and um, that is just money saved and helps us in the end. It's been found that using multiple inlet, we can achieve about a 24% reduction versus concert or straight baby systems. Um, in Arkansas, we have a rice verification program and we try to document anything and everything that we do in that program. Dr. Chris Henry went back and looked and found that um, if those that had not used multiple inlet, we have been averaging 30.7 inches of water. If those that used multiple inlet, averaged 30.3. There's no significant differences, but a lot of guys would say, well, I put the poly pipe out there, I punched the holes, but they had their gate set so that water would still flow from one lake let me paddy to another and exit the field. They have to catch afternoon rain shower. They were not saving any water in the field. They were using that, but still you know, cascading water on down. Now, one thing that was obvious, they did on um, fields that had a use most mainly, they had a higher yield, 180 bushels, <coughs> on 170 bushels on average. Uh, what are some issues and barriers? Uh, Guys just want to go out there and use the piranha that they used to punch the holes in the poly pipe for water the corn or their soybeans. They don't want to take the time to use the program, figure out what they need to do, put in blue gates. Um, they don't want to cross the levees with the tractors um, and damage the levees and then have a potential place where they could break. 
the availability of labor. But then guys have done this and like this, they say up front, yeah, the guys, at first they hated it, but then the rest of the summer when they realized they're not running and checking their gates and all that, they said the guys like it then. Then if you have a pipe failure, um, it can be an effort to um, repair it or fix it. Um, you see this picture right here, this is just poly pipe down from the station going out through the field. They just took their piranha and post the holes in it and um, just guessing on how to do it. When you do um, multiple limit, you need to use 9, 10, or tri-mill on it. Less than 1,200 gallons, 12 inch, uh, 12 to 2,200, 15, and over 2,200 gallons go up to the 18 inch pipe. Talking about free board on the levy gates, um, right there, you'd really want to set it so that we have about three inches of free board. So if we catch some afternoon thunderstorms that can drop that one, two, three inches of rain, if we can save it in the field, that can buy us another maybe five, six days that we don't have to park. And that's a critical point of where the water savings is realized is having this free water kitchen, the rainfall, and not letting the water just blow out of the farm. <coughs> this right here, I'm going to talk about this farm after a while, but um, he had asked me to um, help him this year. He had called me and I said, look, we can come out there and help you do this, get it set up, but when you said you could levy gate, set it up so that we have free board out there. So if you catch some rainfall, we catch it in the field, it just doesn't flow out the bottom of the field. And we went out there, actually we get close to full um, flood, and yeah, the gates had been set up so that if they caught a rainfall, he was going to hold it. Um, you know, just punching holes arbitrarily, let the water flow over the levee gates. You're not really, you don't have any control, no adjustment. You're not gaining anything on your efficiency. And um, just as a guideline, when you um, Use the um, blue gates. Um, use that. Um, punch a hole all the way open. You're gonna get 60 to 75 gallons for a fully open hole. If um, this is how easy it is to pop a hole out, um, punch a hole in, and install a gate. This My is graduate a graduate student. She can do it. Anybody. <laughs> so, you know, she'd never been around rice before and was able to do it. Computer engineer. You see on the top, you know, quarter open, five to 20 gallons. All right. And here's a, um, some issues we're going to talk about. Um, now let's just ask, can anybody tell us what's wrong with this picture? No waterfall. Who said that? You said what? There you go. Yep. Pink ship power. How do you know that? I can look at it. <laughs> what do you want to do? <laughs> <laughs> not obvious, not always obvious. Yeah. 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 Most people use those tiles to shut water off the unit pipe, right? Yeah. That's how you, that's how you know the end of the pipe set, right? Yeah. You look at the levee next that's to it, same it's size. almost as hot. <laughs> yeah. Okay? So if you make levees really tall, it's like putting a pallet. Well, it's like, the, it's like the shell across the levee it. where they connected that outside levee to the levee going across the field, and that's not a good place. You know, but this is a farmer that we, they came to me and asked for me to have some help. I said, not just the herbicide program, we're going to do the, everything. They got the pipe laid out, and when they butted the levees, they did it the way they always had done it in the past, and we ran into this issue. So it was a learning process. Get, we can only get water about half the field. We just put our fertilizer. You know, you got the pipe going down the middle of the field or out 10 foot from the edge of the field. When you cross the ledge, you don't have to put the pipe under the, uh, put some fixed pipe <coughs> under there so you can get water to both sides. Um, design it multiple in it. You know, you need to know how big are your levees, how many holes to punch how to set the blue gates, how much pipe you need, and what size pipe. But 
you need to know what your flow is. And so that determines what size of pipe and everything else back from there. At the, um, pretty much every extension office in the state and the Delta has flow meters available. You can contact your local NRCS office and come out and check your flow. Um, check your flow in April or May. It's not going to be what you're going to be pumping in June and July. The farm I, we're going to be talking about, we are pumping 1,600 gallons. To make everything work in the end, I had to actually run the plant at 1,000 gallons. Um, if you don't have access, you can always use the um, way that's been around forever. Um, plumb bob and figure out you know, how far you got to go out to have eight inches vertical drop. And, um, so you got to finish pipe by times 10 inch times your um, distance. It gives you approximately your flow. And, you know, every time they check this against the flow meter, it comes out to be um, pretty close. This is a field um, here on the left. The farmer um, asked me last winter, said, hey, can you come out and help me on my herbicide program? I just want to sit up and save some money. Y'all show your verification program to save money. We went, I said, I want to do the whole program. I want to do the install, the nitrogen management, the multiple inlets. We're going to come out and scout your field weekly, but we want to implement all the practices that we recommend that extension. And so, um, this right here is the very design that I came up using the app we have available. You see up there on the top, that red dot, that's where the well is. We come down about a quarter of a mile run. He ran the, uh, through a culvert into a field. And this field right here, I'm going to say it's approximately 78 acres. But you can see some of those, um, we got 24 bays in there. Some of those right there in the middle, 0.9 acres was all that we were flooding up, you know. So, you know, we also talk about in the future. He would be interested in maybe send this in row wise, you know, and see how it worked out here. So we had quite a few levees, a big fall. Um, we got the um, pipe put out and um, worked with them. One thing you want to make sure on the poly pipe when you cross the levee, you want to have your blue gates. Your holes, as soon as you cross the levee and it gets back down, you want to have your holes on the up end of the levee pad that way. You hold water in the pipe from there on down to the next levee. It gives you ballast. Storms come through, anything like that, your pipe's not going to be blowing around. That's the only reason we really recommend that you do that. Uh, you look back over here, you can see those levee butts on the um, going up through there, how tall they were compared to the rest of the levees. You can see what they've been dug out. Uh, we found out the hard way, you know, he got everything put out, turned it on, got water down a few levees, and that was just it, couldn't push water any further. I got a phone call, you know, pipes and pipe had been busted, and to see, you know, what's going on and this and that. You know, we got out there with shovels, and me and Chris's crew and all, we dug the saddles down, put the pipe going down through there, and, uh, got water to the bottom of the field, and um, I would go by there and say started watering beans and other guys in the area started dropping the um, flow a little bit. I would just on the app, I would bring it up and I was doing 1,500 gallons and go by we're down to 12, 50, 1,300 gallons. I'd redo it real quick, drive down the road and um, hop out and adjust the gates until we had a good, the water flow proportion. Um, where we, we were getting water from the top of the field to the bottom of the field going into the um, rice field. Um, that's right here, you know, we had um, the back um, blue gates open maybe uh, a quarter, the top one's all the way open. They never had really used poly pipe before, the blue gates, they, this farm at the end, he was really happy on how this field turned out. And they used the water. This is just looking in the season and well, yeah, no way to... this is just a little video I did put on Twitter um, this year after we discovered this, just talking about how we had to go out there and dig the um, butts out so we get water to the end. Just 
it was a learning for us and a learning for the farmer about how the lady height can make a really big difference on um, watering the field. And uh, when they said in the past, they never thought about it because they'd always butter the levees the same way. It never had been an issue, but if they're going to start doing this pollen pipe, which they've told me that once they got done duck guy, they want to sit down and get all their fields set up this coming year, multiple inlet, and they yes, the levees going to be butted up a, a different way, so this is not a problem. Um, you know, on into the season, this is just looking at the field. We're about three weeks out from flood. Um, about the mid-season point, I mean, the rice looks good. I mean, we've got the water out there. Fortunately, all the levees, there's no issues. They're happy. You know, we um, had rainfall when we went to flood. It took us about um, six or seven days to get water across the whole field. But we had some rainfall mixed in there, some light rains like everybody else did. We had agritane, the, the urea was treated with agritane, and um, we had to go on. I used green seed on this field also, and then star. I had to go back and fly on extra 100 pounds of urea three weeks after flood. Um, just for whatever reason, we had lost a little bit or whatever, but um, we still cut better than their field next to it that have had the you know, normal amount pre flood. This is flooding right now? Yes. And this is like about the three weeks point, and I was I took this picture when I was out there using the green seeker, and um, you know we flew, came on flowing another hundred pounds of urea, and um, that those, shows three weeks out, and we still do that and not lose yield. Are those streaks, is that what we're seeing there? What's that? Those are the levees, and then the paddies. The, but th this field was treated with, with Instar, uh, the program where we can go out, we take those soil sample cores. <laughs> Yes, on that, your rice is going to be a little bit lighter color green, uh, but color doesn't make you money. And so we went out with 100 pounds right now based on what the green sticker showed. And this field cut 168 bushels. He said normally they're in the 170, 170, 170, 180 bushel range, depending on the year and variety. This is clear field 151. The field right next to it was a clear field 171. And it cut five bushels less than we did on this field. And it had the normal nitrogen rate up front. It looked dark and it was a whole lot bigger. Um, when I was out at the uh, irrigation place and stuck her in some equipment, a farmer ran into me and said, Hey, I've got a field. This field right here is 80 acres. The well's on the top left. He said, I never can get water to the bottom, all the way to the east side of the field. Can you, will that use the poly pipe? Will that help me water this field better? I thought, sure, we'll give it a try. I got with him. This field and this field are north and south of each other. And both of them 80 acres. He said, you know, we cut good rice, but the bottom of the field always, a lot of times, in the end of the summer, be dry. And I got with him and I said, hey, if you'll do these things, set your gates, you know, to catch rainfall, uh, treat each little patty as its own field. He did all that. Uh, um, he was impressed. We did not go to flood until June 24th on this field. It's a hybrid field between rains and him trying to get other stuff done and all. It was um, got painted kind of late. These fields cut it up in the 180s even for that late of the season. He was tickled with it. And this field also was service watered. And I told him, I said, the advantage of using this pipe in the blue gates is when he goes to flood, normally if this was with the flood in early May, he would have the capability to push 2,500 gallons to 3,000 gallons a minute on this field. Well, if we use some blue gates, I thought we can do two plants once for the, then when it's rice only, but when he starts watering his corns and beans, it goes back to 1,300 to 1,400 gallons, I can give him another plant where he'll go out there, close the blue gates down, and then, then just keep the field maintained with a lower flow. And, um, but he was, you know, ran into me, said, hey, me to call you about this. I had to sit down, um, Chris is gonna talk about this out, but it took me 10 minutes to draw this field, get it designed and have a plan ready to go. So, that's all. You can talk about the, since you designed it out. <laughs> I'm gonna just do a quick demo with it. So we've got a, we've got a mobile app that we, that we developed. That's what Grant used, he just talked about it. It's available on uh, Android or, or iOS, not App Store. 
And the reason we did it was because the hard part about Miri is finding out how big the levees need to be, how big, how big are they. And so you can trace the, um, the, uh, the levees from the aerial imagery on the app. It's all on a server. You can go to any device and uh, pull it all back up. And then we've also got the ability to pull uh, GPS levy files, uh, arc view shape files from the tractor or from surface if you design your own levies. And that is really fast. Uh, so if you're a crop consultant or a surveyor of levies, I figure this is a, a, a possible business opportunity for you to provide this as a service to farmers uh, because of the GPS issue, and, but it makes it so much easier to do it. Um, so that's what it kind of looks like. I'll just show you real quick. I can do a. Levy curtains. Uh, levy curtains. Yeah, when they had their levy curtains in the fields. Oh, you mean spills? Spills. Spills. Or gates. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. What's the question? Yeah. What's, what, what's under there to hold that? Oh, uh, it's a rebar or a two by four. Just roll it up. Just roll that. Roll it up, you put it up on the upper side, and you can do it either way. Yeah. 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 Uh, like something else. When you go to this, you'll have a login screen. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and go past that. You create an account just like you would anything else, and, and log in and, and uh, pick a field. And uh, say you edit it, and uh, you put in the name of the field. And, and if you don't know the area of the field, you can go find the field. Uh, go to Pulls up the map and you go find the find the field. Uh, the flow rate, uh, the land slope, and then it's going to tell you what the what the flow rate needs to be. Just can't go any lower. Go ahead of that next, and then uh, you can go in and draw in your levees. You know where they are. Sometimes you can see them on the aerials. Uh, so like this field right here. Uh, you can just go draw those in. And uh, so I'll just delete that one and we'll just draw it in. That feels the same way. Save on pipe, and I'm going to let the last two levees just overflow and you can move it up and, and play with your plan. And then uh, you got side and multiple. So if you go through the middle of the field, use the multiple option. If you're but most fields go through the side, you know, along the edge, because it's so much easier. So the plan will give you a side gate plan or a multiple you want to plan either way. Yeah. And you hit next, and it's going to give you a plan. So there's your there's your plan. How many areas in each levy? Um, how to set the gate for each levy and levy levy one? You just open, put a gate, blue gate in that um, border. Left and right, left side of the pipe, right side of the pipe. You know, I did one and went through most of the middle of the field was on one side. You get by with the side and play with the pipe and just put a gate on one side. That's so much easier. Left and right is actually looking from the well. From the well, that's right. That's right. And then. Uh, at the bottom, it tells you how many uh, how much pipe, how many rolls of pipe you need. So I need one roll plus 91 feet, um, and what size. And so you basically uh, you create a report. It's going to save the PDF. You can email it to Bubba or the knuckleheads right there in the field in your pickup if you want to, and send it right to them. They pull it up on their phone. And you've got the whole plan. How long it's going to take the flood up? Uh, 
uh, like 62 hours, put on two acre inches. So you know how long to take the flood up, a rough idea, how long to take the flood up the field, how much pipe, what the gates need to be set at, and it's going to give you a map at the bottom. But, you know, this is the plan. So literally in a few minutes, or you take the time, if you've got the levee file, or you take the time to draw your levees, you've got in a few minutes, you can have a, you can have a plan uh, real fast. And I'll show you real quick. We've got a few minutes. Let's start a new field. Any secrets to keeping that from? We've always had a problem when we did that center inlet. We always call that center inlet when we put it in the middle of the field, keeping that bag from floating. Any tricks? Uh, put the gates, uh, put your blue gates at the top of the levee, and that way when you shut your pump off, there's water in the Bottom. Okay, Five let's say we balance. don't use the blue gates. Let's say we're stabbing hose. Yeah, I don't recommend you do that. <laughs> you know, you like the blue gates. That's the best way. You don't have any control. I mean, how do you sure. control it? You got too much water, you gotta go poke some more holes. All right, so let's go poke some more holes, and, and pipe gets flatter, and then all of us, now it's, we don't have enough water over here, so we gotta go over here and punch some more holes. Right? right? Well, at the end of the day, you got pipe like this, water going everywhere, and you haven't saved anything. You're better off. Put the blue you. gates in. You're and, better off. And then, what's your blue gate? They're not that bad. And you can reuse them. I mean, I, and I understand people are going to complain. People complain to me about uh, they're expensive or, or they're hard to get out at the end of the year. Uh, you know, when you take them out, they're, they're, they're kind of a pain. Uh, they're hard to get out. So, I mean, I understand that. But at the end of the day, you, you take the time to do it. Um, well, those are the best. Uh, you know, during the season, it's safe, and that's probably the biggest message. Christopher, roll rise and when you're doing your bowl punch design, and it gives you a couple of different options for, I guess, the most efficient bowl punch size. Have you chosen smaller or larger sizes to uh, based on your experience to get a better efficiency down the road for row rights as opposed to just using the whole bus design. For row rights, yes, for row rights. Yes. How do I how do we punch the holes in row rights? That's the question. With the for row rights we would need. So for, for all the plant all the ones we need in for row rights we need pipeline. Just like for everything rice. corn or Soybeans or cotton or peanuts, exactly the same setup. This is for paddy rice. Rice irrigation, let's name that. This is for multiple in the rice irrigation flood of rice. But on furrow yeah. rice, when I get to my cotton, I would try to give them the most efficient number that it would give. Don't have that with me if they're, they're re lifted out of a bio or something, you get trash going through there, well, there's going to be a minimum size hole that we can't go below when we clock it up. So. But if it's well water and they got short lunch of three eighths of an inch, whatever, sure. yeah, we just look for the most efficient sale for our own gun. This is where the this is where the app really This is where the app really shines. This farmer has pulled his levees. He's got our decan his tractor, and he, he pulled all the levees, and he gave it to us. So you didn't have to draw. Uh, yeah, it's so much faster. Than That's got to be more than two Put Bob in the driver, get the tremble, yeah, get the go bud, and record each one of them line features. You're, you're driving it anyway. Yeah. Okay. You, you showed two tenths of an inch drop. That's got to be way more than two tenths of an inch. Tenth per hundred. I know. That's what I'm saying. That's got to yeah, be. Yeah, that's about what they are right there. Mm. Uh, so 30 there's 30 some levies here. Yeah, that's right. Well, look how, how, how long it took me to pull them in. Yeah. Right? That's going to make, now what I've done is we, we make you pull each levy in individually. And ask you because levees can be all kinds of different shapes and sizes. But I'm going to hit add levy button there and then ask me if it looks right. I say yes. There's the first levy. You got to go back and recreate the, the other, the other the, the, actually the first levy because the computer can't really tell exactly where that first levy is because only got part of it. But it goes in and knows where the rest of the polygon is. And so you can go through and just you know, create each one. And uh, you know, a couple minutes in a minute. Two minutes, I can have the whole field run out. So now that that two tenths that he was talking about, they, when they that's that's across the whole field. The, where you, how do you 
Well, you I, just when, I get, when I get two tenths of elevation change, I'm going to strike a letter. Okay. I need another two tenths. I got strike a letter. All right. So this, this is multiple in the field. And that's how we, act, we actually did this on this field. That's how we laid the pipe on that field. It worked really well. And we, did, we gave the plan, and uh, we did it as a side in the, in the field. And, uh, it worked beautiful. I didn't adjust any of the gates. So uh, this is helpful to you. It's free. Uh, you can uh, download it right now on your phone. IPad's a lot easier. Uh, and, uh, feel free to use it. If you got problems with it, let us know. Please don't call me during the irrigation season when I roll out high. <laughs> I tried to do it before. Appreciate it. <laughs> Get enough phone calls during that time period. So, but uh, anyway. When you look at this, you say number of holes. It's only one hole, and it's at half of the. Yeah, because I just I just put some. Well, I didn't I mean, that's, what, that's what he's saying. Yeah, yeah, so it's saying uh, put so put a blue gate in blue and gate uh, instead of a, set of, uh, open the gate halfway. Gotcha. And then if it has a black hole next to it, you'll punch two holes, put a blue gate in one, and adjust that gate. You know, because you need some some paddies will need so much flow there you don't need to put a blue gate in every hole, right? So uh, that's why on on this field where you're going through the middle, uh, I, because it's so much easier, you know, if you look at this field, most of the area is on the south end of that pipe. You could, we, when we did it this way, we put the little four inch piece of pipe under the, under the poly pipe, and the water it will equilibrate across the levee. Um, so you only need to put a gate, you know, one gate really in that levee. Otherwise, if you've got a field split, let's say, uh, let's say you were splitting the field in half, like that, you probably need to put a gate on each side of the pipe because your area, area is equally split. So, you know, but you can play with this and, and optimize the design, and, and that's the point when, of playing. When you do a plan in, on the app, it, it, you said that you can create a PDF of, of the. Yes, yeah, it creates a PDF. Now, can you? Can you bring it like if you want to store that into? Uh, yeah. So like, hey, I tell you what, I'm gonna I'll create this report and I want to email it to you right now because I'm sending the pickup and I want to get out. And this little button up in the corner, you can't see it very well. And it's different on the Android. Uh, I, I can mail it to you. Text it. Gotcha. Okay. Well, on my phone I can text it. My iPad's not set up for texting, right? But I can email it to you right here. And, uh, you can get it on your phone. So I mean, there, there's the PDF. There's the plan right there. And everything's there, the map too. Everything is there you need. That's the whole point. You can take the paper, you go to the shop, this is how much poly pipe I need, and I'll we need to add in how many gates you need. I haven't done that yet. But how many how many how many gates, how much pipe, go to the field, this is how you need to lay it out, this is how you need to punch the holes, how many holes to punch, how to set the gates, everything you need to know. I mean anybody that ought to be able to go to the field and get it right. That was the whole point of it. Yeah. The answers compare with my plan. I mean, it, it, their program is it pretty close. You know, we do it the same way. So. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little biased. Obviously, I wrote this from this app, so. but uh, you know, so the difference is going to be so small. Uh, I did it because everybody really seems to like uh, the smart. On the devices, and I'll be honest. When, a lot of times when I'm needing to do this, people want to sit in their couch and do it. They want to sit at the computer. And my and the agents I work with, they're not sitting. And the consultants are not in their computer. They're in the field. And I don't know how many times I've pulled over the side of the road and had to do faucet on my laptop, or I can't get an internet connection. And this doesn't work unless you have an internet connection. That is one downside to it. But you know, most of us have. A lot yeah. of people have this have a cell mode in there. Right. right. You pull off side of the road and do it. Because if something's not right, you can fix it right there, or it doesn't seem right, or you need it. But what's good about it? Well, like, as soon as he pulls the levy files, you can get them on Dropbox. Basically, you got to put your levy files, put them on Dropbox. Once they're there, then you just that is is, is Google off. Maps that it's using, or is it well, or is it you know Apple and Google don't get along very well. So, so but, 
the iPhone uses Apple Maps, Apple Maps. Uh -huh. and the Android uses Google Maps, but also use RP Maps. And so in the Android version, I actually have more than one year you can flip around between if your levies don't show up, you can try another year and see if they show up in about 60% of the time they're there. And the rest of the time they're not. Unfortunately, I don't have any control over the years and when Google provides what year they provide. So that's the only downside. That's why knowing the levy files so much easier. All surveyors, if you have your levy surveyed, they'll have this data. They know where the levies are going to go. All you got to do is ask them. They throw it away. They, they toss it by. So all you got to do is ask them. What's the name of the app? Rice Irrigation? Rice Irrigation. Okay, you pull it up on your phone right now. Rice, type in Rice Irrigation. And you're with, if you're with Delta Classic, it probably doesn't work on your phone. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I don't care what you use, honestly. I, I really, if you want to use Pipe Planner, I don't care. Use this. I don't care. As long as you use something, and they don't care either. I'll tell you that. They don't care what you use. Just use their pipe. <laughs> Whatever you want, do it. Use their pipe. Put the blue, figure out how many blue gates you need and put them in. Yeah. That's the main point. Thanks. Thank, Thank you, John. Thank you.